Hello, YouTube! Have you been looking for a reliable network video recorder that works with almost any RTSP or OnVIF IP video camera? Are you interested in real-time object detection for your camera feeds? How about being able to send notifications when objects or people are detected? In today's video, I'm gonna cover part one of the installation and configuration of Blue Iris NVR and DeepStack object detection, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm Jeff. Welcome to the channel. I cover all sorts of smart home nerd topics here. I'm just your average professional IT nerd. With 25 years in the industry, I've learned a thing or three about programming, networking, and all around nerd stuff. My goal with this channel is to make complicated stuff less complicated so that everybody can have a smart house, the easy way. Come with me on my journey to make the dumb things smart and the smart things easier. So rather than make one big, huge video, I've chosen to break this up into parts. In part one of this three-part series, I'm going to cover the parts list for my Blue Iris NVR and getting all the software installed, as well as some very basic configuration. Part two will complete the configuration and add a couple of cameras. And part three will cover the Home Assistant integration as well as some automations that I've written to leverage some of the cool stuff that this setup can do. Previously, I was running Blue Iris and DeepStack on an older Intel i5 Nook, but I had some problems with it. At first, it was great, but as the number of cameras in my setup increased, it really began to struggle. Because of this, I decided to upgrade the hardware that I'm running it on. Now, Blue Iris is Windows only, so if you're one of those people that's against Windows, thanks for clicking the pretty thumbnail, but you may as well just bail now. See ya. Still here? Cool. The issue that I was having that caused me to go down this path was that my old Nook just couldn't keep up anymore. The CPU was constantly getting pegged. This was being caused, in part, by DeepStack. Since my old Nook did not have a GPU in it, it couldn't offload the object detection via DeepStack. As a result, the more camera streams that I added, the harder that it had to work to keep up. Not only for processing the camera streams, but also for the object detection since I was using the CPU version of DeepStack. Eventually, I got fed up of having to reboot it every day, so I ordered some new hardware. I'll throw a link down in the description, but at first I went with an Intel Nook 11 Enthusiast. It sports an 11th generation quad-core i7-1165, which is a 10 nanometer mobile processor with a max of eight threads and a max speed of 4.7 gigahertz. The model I purchased also included 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, a one terabyte SSD, and an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060. That last bit, the graphics card, that's the reason why I chose that model because you needed NVIDIA card to offload deep stack object detection. Now I know an RTX 2060 sounds old and slow at this point with the 4000 series cards being pretty available, but you really don't need much to improve the performance of DeepStack. There are plenty of guys out there that are running these on much older and cheaper NVIDIA cards. As for the specific reasons of why I chose a Nook, I didn't have another PC laying around that was up to spec in terms of processor speed. And given the current cost of graphics cards, I thought that getting a Nook just made sense. By the time you get a processor, memory, main board, etc., etc., and then tack on another few hundred bucks for the RTX 2060 that's included with the Nook, I just didn't think you could build a system from scratch for less money. Boy, I had no idea how right I was when I had that thought. Anyway, in addition, the power consumption, noise, and heat generation are all much lower with a Nook than they are with a full-blown PC. And yet, none of this is what I'm currently running my system on. For those of you that missed the 5 Minute Friday video where I discussed that fiasco, the Reader's Digest version is that the Nook 11 that I ordered had some bad hardware and was constantly blue screening. So at that point, I decided it probably made more sense to just build a system anyway. I could add more storage to it than I could with the Nook, and I could upgrade my main video editing system and reuse some of those parts. So what did I end up with? I don't wanna bore people who are just here for the how-to, so we'll go into more detail on that after we get through the Blue Iris config. I've rambled long enough, let's get started. First things first. If you want to follow along exactly as in the video, I'm running this on Windows 10 using an Intel processor with an NVIDIA GPU. Step one is to download everything that we're going to need. This includes Blue Iris, DeepStack GPU for Windows, the NVIDIA CUDA Toolkit, and NVIDIA CUDNN. I'll leave links to all that stuff in the description below. In order to download the CUDNN package, you'll have to sign up for an NVIDIA developer account, but it's free and it only takes a minute. Next. 
you'll need to make sure that you have the latest studio drivers installed for your GPU. Studio drivers? NVIDIA has two different driver sets available. The first is for gaming, which apparently is a little more loose and squeaks out every last drop of performance for those of you that just gotta have those extra three frames of performance for your video games. The other driver is what they refer to as their studio driver, which is designed for people who value stability. This is the driver that I use for my MVR as well as for my video editing rig. Once you've got everything downloaded and have the latest NVIDIA drivers installed, run blueiris.exe to begin the installation. There are a couple of prerequisites, but don't worry, Blue Iris will install them automatically if they aren't found on your system. There aren't really any options to speak of, so just next, next, finish. When you get to the end, uncheck the boxes to view the readme file as well as launch Blue Iris. We don't wanna run it just yet. After you've installed those, run DeepStack Installer GPU to begin the installation of DeepStack. Once that is completed, run the CUDA Toolkit Installer. Now, in this video, I'm installing version 11.4, but I later changed that to version 12.1, which is what I recommend that you use. Next, unzip the CUDNN download. Then we're going to copy the contents of the three folders into their respective locations in the CUDA Toolkit directory. From bin to bin, include to include, and lib to lib. Now, if you've already done any homework and looked at some documentation on the whole install process that I laid out above, you've probably seen people say to download Visual Studio and check the box for C++ and a bunch of other nonsense. None of that is necessary if all you wanna do is use the GPU for deep stack offload. If you wanna do development work, then by all means, go ahead and install Visual Studio. Anyhow, once you've copied the files, now we're finally ready to launch Blue Iris. Upon launching Blue Iris, you're prompted for your license. Just hit demo and you can try it out for free for 15 days. If you'd like to buy Blue Iris, the cost for the full version is $79.95, which provides support for up to 64 cameras if your hardware is up to the task. That price also includes one year of updates. There's also a light version, which supports only a single camera for $39.95. Of course, these prices are subject to change. This isn't my product, yada, yada, yada. Here's the Blue Iris dashboard. Right now it's empty since we have no cameras. The first thing we need to do is to configure some system options. Click the gear in the upper left next to the logo to access the options configuration. First up on our list is to configure the storage locations for the various types of footage and notification files. Now, my system has three drives, and this is how I recommend that you configure yours as well. C and D on my system are both two terabyte M.2 SSD drives, and E is a 14 terabyte 7200 RPM spinning disk. You want your system drive to be fast because everyone wants a fast system, right? You want D to be fast so that you can do direct to disk recordings without worrying whether or not the drive can keep up. E is where recordings will be archived to, so that can be a larger, cheaper spinning disk. You can also use a NAS if you like. On the storage tab, I leave the Blue Iris database in the default location on the C drive. Under folders in the list on the left, Click new if it's not already selected. This is where all new footage will be stored. And again, this should be on high speed storage. I limit this to 1700 gigabytes. And once that has been reached, I move the data to the stored folder. Let's specify that stored location. In the list on the left, click stored and configure the path where you want to offload archive footage. On my system, E is the 14 terabyte spinning disk. I'm saving 12,000 gigabytes of video and deleting the oldest once that has been reached. With the number of cameras that I have and the resolution that I record at, this gets me approximately eight months of archive footage. Next, we need to configure the alerts directory. This directory doesn't need to be large. It will contain JPEG files that are processed by DeepStack. I store mine on the D drive as well and set it to 10 gigabytes and to delete that once that space is used. Next up is the startup tab. Here, check the box to run as a Windows service and provide credentials. This ensures that every time the system reboots, Blue Iris will start automatically. Then on the cameras tab, change the hardware accelerated decode to Intel plus VPP. VPP leverages Intel QuickSync 
which was introduced all the way back in 2011 with Intel's Sandy Bridge architecture, such as the i5-2400. QuickSync allows for hardware offloading of video processing, which will increase system performance. Note that this is only for hardware offload of camera stream processing or encoding and decoding and cannot be used for deep stack offload. The only thing currently available to offload deep stack processing, to my knowledge, are NVIDIA GPUs. The other thing I check on this page is to automatically play live audio on selected camera and mute the others. Everything else I leave at the defaults. Then on the AI tab, check the box to use AI server. Ensure the auto start stop with blue iris is checked. I set the default object detection to large since I'm using the GPU version of DeepStack. This is the size of the object model that is used to detect objects. The large model contains more objects and training images than the medium model, the medium model contains more than the small, and so on. Note that if you do not have an NVIDIA GPU to offload DeepStack processing, the large model will destroy your processor, so I'd recommend using a smaller model. It's also worth noting that the resolution of your cameras will affect how long it takes to process the images and look for objects. Here's a quick comparison for you. On the left is my front door camera, a two megapixel Ubiquiti doorbell, and on the right is my front yard camera, an eight megapixel Amcrest. As a point of reference, the size of the file analyzed by DeepStack from the doorbell was 330 kilobytes, while the yard camera was 2,184 kilobytes. As you can see, it took a mere 86 milliseconds to identify a car in the two megapixel footage, but took nearly five times as long to identify the exact same car in the eight megapixel footage. Notice that the percentage confidence was also considerably higher in the image from the eight megapixel footage, but I'm getting sidetracked, sorry. Check the box to use GPU. If you wanna do facial recognition, check the box for that. Presently, it doesn't work so well for me, but I think that's mostly due to my camera placements. According to my research so far, facial recognition works best when you have high resolution cameras looking directly at people head on. When and if I ever get that sorted out, I'll make a video focused solely on that topic. If you wanna do ALPR, check the box for ALPR, and click the learn more link to sign up for an account and get a token. The free account limits you to one lookup per second and 2,500 lookups per month. For residential use, this should be plenty. So I mentioned hardware several times in this video and I also discussed it a bit in the previous five minute Friday video. So here's the rundown of the hardware that I'm currently running my Blue Iris and DeepStack server on. The processor is an Intel i7-12700K with 64 gig of DDR4 and an NVIDIA 3060. For storage, I have two two terabyte M.2 SSDs and a 14 terabyte 7200 RPM SATA drive. I put all that into a 4U rack mount case and then shoved it in the rack with my Ubiquiti gear and my UPS. I'll throw links to all that stuff for the build in the description below in case you're interested. Now, is this overkill? Absolutely. Depending on the number of cameras you've got and their resolution, you can get by with way less powerful hardware. On this new system, I've never seen the processor above 15% or the GPU above 10%. Because those two components are operating so efficiently, I've also never seen Blue Iris report more than two gigabytes of RAM usage. Now, as a point of reference, I have four eight megapixel cameras, one four megapixel camera, and seven two megapixel cameras. So why did I choose to use that system? Well, because with what's available on the market today and the prices of components, unless I wanted to buy a used system or a Nook, which I tried, I wasn't gonna be able to build much of a lesser quality system while still saving really any kind of measurable amount of money. I mean, sure, maybe a hundred or two, but with how quickly hardware goes obsolete, I find it's always best to future-proof. My Blue Iris server is a perfect case in point. It used to be on an i5 Nook. For like three or four cameras, it worked great. For a dozen cameras with deep stack and no GPU offload, less great. So rather than having to upgrade or replace this one again in a year or two, if I decide to add more cameras or higher resolution cameras or some new AI image processing software comes out that'll just tax everything, I figured it was best to just have power in reserve. But again, if you saw the previous video, you'll recall that I also upgraded my video editing system. So the parts list above was mostly hand-me-down stuff from that upgrade. The new video editing system is an i9-13900K with 64 gig of DDR5 and an NVIDIA 4070 with four M.2 SSDs. 
I'll include links to all those parts in the description as well in case anybody's interested. So there you have it. Some hardware discussion and the install and base config for Blue Iris. Be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss part two where I show how to add a camera feed and configure everything needed for that, including substreams, motion detection, and deep stack object detection. Part three will be adding the whole works to Home Assistant and then configuring notifications that we can leverage in automations. If you'd like to support the channel, as well as receive exclusive benefits, such as copies of my automations, dashboard, and configuration YAML files, early access to ad-free videos, access to the Fast How To Discord channel, free t-shirts, and more, please consider becoming a patron over on Patreon. There's a link in the description if you're interested. As always, thank you for supporting the channel. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please go ahead and give that like button a slap to tell the YouTube algorithm that this was a good video. I hope that you found today's video entertaining and informative. I hope that I was able to teach you something. I hope you liked today's t-shirt, link in the description, and I hope to see you guys again for part two. Thanks for watching, and until next time, go automate something, will ya?